all the years of man's existence, no matter what he has learned or been taught from generation to generation, still he carries in the innermost depths of his mind a certain fear of the darkness. A fear of the night, which is somehow associated with death, and which in actuality is the fear of death itself. Welcome to the Paranormal Portal. Hope you guys are doing great, and thank you so much for spending the day with me here on the show. Uh, we've got an epic show lined up for you guys. Got a couple of wonderful gentlemen joining us today. We're joined by uh, Joe Wilson and Tim Moon, who are are both uh, have some incredible experiences. Uh, Tim has also written a, a, a book about Joe's experiences, and we'll get into all this in just a couple minutes, ladies and gentlemen, but I hope you're all ready, because this is going to be epic. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Paranormal Portal Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Thomas. Thank you all for joining us, and special thank you goes out to all of you who continue to support the podcast and continue to spread the word. Always remember, if any of you out there have experiences of your own that you'd like to share, feel free to email me at paranormalportalradio at gmail.com. Again, paranormalportalradio at gmail.com, and you too could be a guest on the show. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks so much for coming on. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Oh, it's absolutely my pleasure. And uh, I I really appreciate you guys making this work today. Um, you know, as with all journeys, there's always a beginning. So, Joe, do you mind telling us where did this all start for you? Well, it's when I was really, really young. Uh, we were living in uh, Magnolia, I think it's at his 2708 West Blaine Street. I mean, anyway, it's a big old, old house. And uh, I remember certain things about that house. And uh, one of them was seeing a little boy. And he would, like, just show up once in a while. And then one time uh, I saw him fall. He was, like, right behind my dad going into the bathroom. And I ran after him. And he wasn't there. He just disappeared. So, I mean, I, I, it just got stranger from there, you know. Oh, yeah. That's quite a, I mean, that's quite an introduction, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It, so, and that's kind of well, that's where it started. You know, I I've, I've seen I've seen, I see ghosts once in a while. Wow. So you you've had this. What what age would you suppose? Oh, I had probably about four or five. Oh yeah. So you were quite young, man. Yeah. It, was that a, where it started? That's an incredible start. But um, was the activity pretty pretty profound throughout your your childhood? Um, I I can't say it was. I just know that that in that house mm-hmm. um, there was you know several things that went down when I was a kid. That's uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, one of them is I remember uh, we were out in the living room and there's like the centerpiece on the mantle. I'm not sure quite what it was, but it was on the mantle, a pretty big fireplace, old type fireplace. And the thing just kind of lifted off, floated out and just sat there for a minute and then dropped and crashed and broke all over the place. My mom and uh, I think my aunt was there anyway, was absolutely terrified. And I remember that we're all I we're terrified. Yeah. So I mean that's just one of the things. And uh, wasn't it true that they'd stopped putting stuff on the mantle? They did. I, I remember that. Yeah. Because of that. Yeah. Wow. But the other thing is, uh, my mom went and investigated uh, about the little boy. And Tim, you can tell him what she found out. I think. 
Well, uh, a little bit. We were. I was only eight, so I was pretty young too, eight or nine. And she found out by doing a Ouija board, which I'm not endorsing. Okay, but that was <laughs> that was in the seventies, so sixties. So I, she, that's they found out a name, and I can remember them doing that and some initials, and I don't remember the initials, but I remember them doing that, and then. She went to down to the city and looked in the library and found out someone, a boy, had died on the stairs there um, in the 30s. Wow. And so we just assumed there was a connection, but there was a lot of strange things that happened in the house. And um, I think um, Joe also mentioned that Mom regularly got mad at him because he thought, she thought he was taking the pots and pans out in the kitchen and making a mess in the kitchen at night. Do you remember that, Joe? I do. Yeah, I wasn't. It was something else. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the little boy did, uh, that she found out the little boy died in the house, not on the stairs. They, they brought him back in the house where he was still alive, but then uh -huh. died. Wow. A couple of days later or something like that. There were some big cement stairs going down to a garage, down to the road from up above a plateau where the house sat. And I was in the backyard. But so that's all what was verified. That's incredible. Wow. So so as stepbrothers, you guys were exposed to this from a very young age. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. That's pretty incredible. And, and Tim... How about you? Which was, where did this start for you? I mean, obviously you both had those same experiences, but did you see the little boy as well? I never saw him. Okay. I heard him. Wow. Uh, we, we, uh, heard of, we, it was just common. It became common knowledge that this thing lived in our house with us. Yeah. They have my, oh, we called it Harvey for, for the longest time. My mom would made it up. My mom made it up. Harvey the ghost, you know, must be Harvey. And uh, I had uh, a, my my grandma, both my grandma and my aunt had experiences with them when they visited us. Um, I I remember sitting in my bedroom downstairs and listening in the kitchen and list and knowing everyone was asleep because I my dad was a truck driver. He was gone a lot, and and when he was gone, um, I kind of paid attention to where everybody was and the and mom was asleep and the kids were asleep and the other kids and and i listened for half an hour to someone moving pots and pans around in the kitchen but <laughs> i don't for the life of me know why i didn't go in and look and and i don't remember being scared but i just don't honestly know what i was thinking as an eight-year-old or nine-year-old so um and then i i think i just went to bed went to sleep and that was it that that's the where I actually heard him um, mm. that I can remember consciously. Yikes! Now, how long were you guys ever putting flour downstairs on the basement floor to see if we could pick up footsteps? Did you ever? We never. I don't remember ever getting footsteps, but just the fact that we would even try that, yeah, and it was endorsed by mom. <laughs> we would not put flour on the floor unless they allowed us to do it. Mm. And uh, but. So it it was just a lot of little things like that happened. A lot of times the washer would go on or the dryer would go on or so just a lot of strange happenings. So but nothing benevolent. I mean malevolent, I'm sorry. Okay. It was never scary. Oh good. Okay. It was kinda like a family member. Well, it became that way. It was pretty damn scary. I remember being scared and mom being scared. I remember I think grandma packed up and left or yeah, talking to her or something like that yeah it's she she um was sleeping there and something was scratched under her bed and she thought it was the dog and she looked down and there was nothing there so she just thought she was hearing something and then it happened again and she looked down again and there's still nothing there and she said so she packed all her stuff and went in the living room and waited for a taxi and said i'm i'm out i'm not coming back <laughs> oh jeez wow so she just scared her pretty bad sure um but I don't know if I, I it's don't, a haunting. Yeah, I that's what it is. It was a haunting. Yeah, and at least for the most part, it was pretty benign. Uh, other than you know, Joe, you getting blamed for the pots and pans, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> other than that, it's it seems it. It's just a ghost story, you know. Sure, it's true. Yeah, 
And it, it seemed to be very, uh, um, uh, at least aware of you guys. So, you know, it was, a it wasn't just a residual thing where something was just echoing and echoing. Um, but there was, it was, seems to be directed activity, like, you know, to actually drag out the pots and, and to climb yeah. them and, and the, the mantelpiece coming off and crash into the floor. That's, <laughs> that's got right. a really intense to see. Yeah. That's some real stuff. I mean, that's, that's not just a a replay, a replay of something. No, it's 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 floating around. Wow. Okay, so how long did you guys live in this location? At least from the time I was in first grade till the time we were I was in seventh grade. Oh, so quite a long time. In seventh grade we moved to Renton. Okay. Which is a suburb of Seattle. Okay. So so uh yeah, but from for that long, and it was a part of it. Um, just in a, we just accepted it, you know, as part of the whole situation. As long as we were there, I don't remember it not being an issue. Right. Yeah. I, Renton, it never. I never saw the little boy again once we left. So, so that story's gone. So it was just somehow anchored to the house, it seems. And yeah, absolutely. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure if I went back, it'd be, still be there. <laughs> well, no, the thing is, I went back because I visit when I go to Seattle. Occasionally, I'll drive in the neighborhood we lived, and I actually went up the stairs once and knocked on the door, and someone came to the door. But I asked if he ever noticed anything strange or anything in the house. But I think I was a stranger, and it was kind of an <laughs> awkward situation. And right, so. He probably just blew me off. He probably who is this idiot? But um, <laughs> he he said there he didn't hear or know of anything in the house, and I don't know. Well, there so, there there is kind of a phenomena with that that it seems that some people can live in a in a in a location and have nothing happen, but then another family will move in and things go absolutely bonkers. Like that, you know, and and I don't know if that's if that's suggestive of sensitivity in the people, like there's, there's no question that, you know, people that have latent or, or uh, active, um, you know, psychic ability or whatever can definitely trigger activity. So I wonder if that could be the case with your family that you guys maybe have just a natural gifts in that way. And, and therefore it really maybe energized or, or was more of a catalyst to the activity than, Anybody else that might live there? Yeah, I, it just. I think I think it's possible. Mm. My my mom see, tended to be kind of oriented in that way. Sure. And it may also have been that it just liked having kids around, and we were all kids. Very true. And it maybe that so it was a, it was a child, so it was, yeah. maybe it was just wanted to hang out. Yeah. Well, like that. Uh, just to change the subject, basically, the house I live in right now, I've lived here since ninety four. And there's a ghost in here, mm-hmm. and I've seen it. It's pretty tall. But it's just a dark shadow ghost. Mm. But uh, I know when I bought the house, I found out uh, somebody has taken their life in here. Oh. And it was one of their sons. Oh. And when I bought the house, there, he had you put a, there was a bowling ball in the corner of the house in the like the garden right there, right on the corner of the house. And he told me not to move that because that was uh, that was the guy who killed himself. And he said, don't move this bowling ball. He was, that was his ball, you know. Or it's, I just said, okay, I'll, I won't move it. It's still there to this day. Oh, very good. But, did yeah. he say that it causes weird spirits or something if you move the ball? Well, I didn't even want to find out. I never <laughs> moved the ball. So it's still there to this day, but... I have seen him, so he, I see him peeking around stuff, and huh. uh, sometimes the uh, curtains float or do some weird stuff. And I mean, I, I like I, I don't know. I mean, I've seen him from basically off and on day one, you know, since I got the house. But he's not. He he doesn't do anything, you know, freak me out too much. I mean, I freak out, but I've seen sure. ghosts before, right. Yeah, there's a there's a difference between being startled and being afraid. You know, I mean, everybody oh, gets there's started. no doubt. Yeah, yeah. So hey. <laughs> you're not usually seeing curtains float up by themselves. So <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> shit moving. <laughs> exactly. Didn't you, that, didn't you say Lisa saw it too? Yeah, she said she saw it dancing with a hat on. Wow. So that's my girlfriend, and she said she's seen it, but, you know, I I never seen it with a hat on. <laughs> oh, okay. But she that's what she saw. Well, that's, a, you know, I mean, I think probably most people would be surprised. Like, if suddenly we all became absolutely aware and able to see spirits, I think... I think we would be shocked to learn that we're probably swimming in a world of spirits. You know, we just I, don't know it. I agree. You know, I agree with that. And probably they don't, for a large part, maybe they're not really aware of us either. Maybe there's kind of that whole barrier thing really keeps it at bay. But then there's, there does seem to be some people that can maybe bridge that gap. And maybe that's you guys, like you guys have some, some energy or ability or whatever. And I don't know how to define that, but. There's no question that certain people can definitely trigger activity and other people will never see anything or experience anything and and it seems to be uh some kind of some kind of energetic thing about them, you know. Well, this is the second apparition I've seen in my life. So, I mean, mm-hmm. I can see I've seen it, you know. So, I've seen the little boy for sure and and I've seen this black shadow uh right. man and uh that's all. I've never seen anything else, really. I just seen Stuff moving and pots and pans making noise and all that stuff, but yeah. it's not. It's just I, I, that's all I've seen. But boy, once you see it, you know it's it's <laughs> seeing you. You know, it's looking at you. I mean, I swear it knows what it's doing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's really powerful. But n- now, Tim, after leaving leaving that childhood home, did you continue to have experiences as well? No, and I and I had the I never saw it. Yeah. So I never, I don't think I've ever had the experiences that Joe had. Right. I heard it and maybe sensed it. Uh huh. Uh, and then I heard about other people's experiences, but I don't, I don't ever remember seeing it. And I've never seen anything. Okay. Any, any, anywhere else I've been, you know, so I'm not as far as apparitions or ghosts are concerned. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's, that's fantastic, I guess. Um, and it's neither good nor bad. I'm just curious if, if, you know, you both continue to have those kind of activities or not. But, you know, I guess if you're going to have hauntings, those are the good ones to have, that they're there. They're not trying to cause trouble. They're not trying to interfere or, you know, cause anguish in your life. They're just there, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I never had a problem with it when I was there. And I've never seen the one at Joe's house. And I've been there a number of times. But, um I know anybody who stayed there. I think one of his other friends told me she'd seen it too once. Oh, so, okay. so, or maybe multiple times. I can't remember. Uh, it likes girls. Christy was telling me that. So, <laughs> well, that's pretty cool, huh? So the the uh, throughout the course of your life, you've had these two experiences, but not much else with the spiritual stuff. Is that correct? No, that's. That's me. That's my story. That's what I know. That's what I got going on. Each of us in his lifetime will probably come in contact with some psychic phenomenon, either directly or indirectly through the experience of a relative or acquaintance. An experience never to be forgotten. Next, let's talk about UFOs. You, you, you've you seen UFOs as well? Yes, absolutely. Um, Tim and, and all my other brothers, uh, uh, we were, we had an experience in Idaho. I mean, Tim, you can tell it uh, as good as I'm going We were driving. We went to the drive-in theater. Yeah, we were all at the drive-in. That was fun to do. <laughs> and when we were driving back, I was watching something that I thought was an airplane go across the sky. And then it it turned like 180 degrees, and just suddenly was going the other way. And I said, "You guys, what is that? Look at that!" And I was driving, so I had to be careful. But apparently, it went behind us, and it was following the it was following our old uh, well, we had that old station wagon, so oh, it was yeah, all, or it was yeah. I don't know if it was. I can't. Remember, I think it was a station wagon. Anyway, it was following us. And I was driving as fast as I could because they were scared. 
Mm-hmm. And but I didn't see it after that they did because they were able to look out all the windows. But anyway, so I'll let you go from there, John. <laughs> well, it's just a big shiny bright light that zipped all around us, and uh, it was we were scared. We were all <laughs> yelling, "Go faster, go faster!" <laughs> And I just remember we were kids, you know, coming home from a drive-in, and it was just bright as all get out. I mean, it lit up the sky. It didn't light up the sky, though. Right. It just was lit up itself. Okay. So what was color just, was the light? Uh, the brightest white light you can oh. imagine, you know, right? And it's not, and it was oval like an egg or or something. It was, it was like a spaceship, you know? That's what it was like. And it was, and it, it could move. It moved like you blink your eyes. Wow. Yeah, it was. It was. It was something out of this world. It had to be. How far away was it from you? If you were to get, uh, it was. Sometimes we get so close. I mean, probably within. A, I mean, it's we're driving. I and I was a kid. I can't remember exactly how it got close though. Okay. And and if you were to guesstimate the size of it, what would you compare it to? Oh, uh, I guess I would carry put to a bus. Oh, so pretty significant. Wow. Yeah, pretty big. That's incredible. Yeah, that's yeah, thirty five feet or forty feet. Oof. And it's shooting around like a like, like a ping pong ball. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty scary. We were scared. I remember being real scared on that night. So and then it just and then it just we. Got to uh, basically going down at we were going to go down this big steep hill mm-hmm. uh, to go to where we were staying, and it just zipped away. It just zipped straight up. Wow! It, or it, it just was gone. Like you blink your eye, you know. Just all of a sudden it's there, and all of a sudden it's gone. No, and that was that night. We were all laughing and screaming and doing all <laughs> good kids do, you know. Sure, I remember that. You're both amused and terrified at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now, since I'm sure both of you have seen the 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 Navy footage of the quote unquote Tic Tac craft, would you say that that was similar? Well, there's a couple different versions of what they're showing. Yes, that's true. But I, like I said, it looked like an egg, or a, it, and it was so bright, and it happened so fast. It right. was, it was, you know, I can't, I can't say I'm going to compare it to those video, any of those videos. Sure, those were pretty far away too. Yeah, so uh, that's true. So, yeah, I was just curious about the general shape of it, if that seemed to be relatively uh, comparable to what you saw. Well, be closer to the what the tic tac was, I guess, yeah. if that's what you're asking. Yep, yep, absolutely. It'd be closer to that tic tac thing, but it didn't look like. I mean, it was so bright, and it had. Uh, I think the the edges of it went, you know, down to a point almost. Oh, okay. Wow. Instead of a tic tac's round. Yep. These went to a point. That's what I remember. Okay. Wow. That's... Point with oblong or yeah, it was. That's all I can remember about that. Yeah, well, that's probably enough. <laughs> it's it's got to be unnerving to have something like that following you because it's at that point it's like, wait a minute, where's this going? You know? Yeah. It was pretty crazy that night. How long do you suppose the whole experience lasted? At least 10 minutes. At least 10 minutes it was following us, right, Tim? That sounds about right to me, yeah. 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 Was the roads very uh, empty at that time? Yeah. Oh, it 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 was. I don't know if you've ever been to Idaho, but it's North Idaho. Yeah, that's right. I actually live in North Idaho. Oh, around Coeur d'Alene, up above Coeur d'Alene, then Spirit Just Lake. right past Raftrum. Oh. Past Raftrum. Yeah, that's about... That's, uh, where all, it, that's where it was going down. I think it's Highway 40. And that, again, was in the 70s. Again, yeah. And probably... It was... The roads are all two-lane, two-way, one one lane each way, and they're dark. Yeah, that's... So. that. You, you know, gentlemen, I don't know if you know this or not, but I saw my first UFO up here as well. And nice. That was about... Where were you? I'm I, just outside of Sandpoint uh, to yeah. the to yeah. the east, and and I live in in Sandpoint, so yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I I saw a saucer. <laughs> nice, yeah. Oh, there's a lot of activity up there. Yes, 
that's what a lot of weird paranormal stuff going on up there too yeah it it seems like there's a lot i i know that we we have activity in this home that we live in as well as you know i've seen the ufo here now i've seen more since then but i've been looking my whole life and never seen anything until the day that i finally did and then it was like Suddenly, you know, I, I I I was always a believer, but then you know I became the knower, and it's like wow, it was just earth shattering to me personally, but in a in an incredible way because I saw it, and I'm pretty sure they saw me, and then it was like okay, this is real enough, I'm going inside. <laughs> yeah, I would too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I wasn't in a car; I was just standing up in the uh, at a, a cabin in the mountains, but it was wow. an intense experience, and. And it was uh, amazing, but it's funny that you would have seen that in this area as well, because I've, I've been maintaining there's, and I've talked to locals up here who've had experiences uh, with dealing with like UFOs and, and strange, strange aerial phenomena, and it's and it's incredible. Something's going on up here. I don't know what it is. I I think if I remember right, Brett, that that time we were there, there were we, it, there was other stuff going on. But we were kids and we were busy doing stuff. So, but I vaguely remember mom and wanting to watch this mountain across from our lake and thinking that they saw lights up there. But it's again, it's vague. So I, I wouldn't sure. say with the certainty that that was happening. But I vaguely remember there being some other weird stuff happening at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a, that's an intense thing. Wow. Have you ever been to Twin Echo Resort? I don't believe so. No, no, I'm pretty sure the no. Twin Lakes, you know what Twin Lakes are, right? Yeah, I know that's in the area. Yeah, yeah. You've been to the Lightning, the Lightning Bar, <laughs> right off of Highway 40. No. That's where we were. Okay, in that area. I don't think I have. I've been over to the Rathdrum. There's a there's a a bar over there that that I did an investigation, a paranormal investigation with a gentleman, and uh, you know we had to run the place, but it's in that same area. Cool. You know, yeah. nice. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And there's an incredible amount of activity. Again, paranormal activity, not just UFOs or not just ghosts. There's just <laughs> there's cryptids and, and everything. This seems to be a hot spot for some reason. Well, I got one more story for you. Uh, in 94, I think it was around 94, early 94, uh, I was up on this hill. We were, uh, just, we, were, we were working on this house. Just finished. Uh, we're wrapping it up. It's the end of the day. We're uh, cracking beers and it be in the... In the back, we had the um, the truck bed down, mm-hmm. and we were just sitting there. We're uh, we were all packed up, and we're just gonna we're talking about the next day, mm-hmm. and we're just having a beer or something. And it's hot, and uh, all of a sudden, something flew right over our head, and and it came. So it must have came out. Of, I live right on Hood Canal, mm-hmm. and we're we're up on this hill, and something came over us. It was just like so fast, just over us. But it dropped water, uh, salt water, all over the truck, all over our tools, all over the house. It, so it had it came out of the water. It was salt water. So whatever it was, because uh, it was just like a whoosh, and we all just were, I kind of we were ducking our heads almost. Wow, that's that's was just the weirdest experience ever. But I wanted to just throw that out there that that. I got, you know, one person's already passed away, but I, there's another guy that was there and he, he, we both were, we just all looked at ourselves. We were dumbfounded about what it was. Did you have any? It definitely, it definitely came out of the water and went straight up right above us. Did you have any, uh, any idea how big that might have been? Well, it was bigger than the house. Oof. I mean, cause it, we oh. saw the, the, the flash of no, and, 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 the. Uh, it was just like a flash, yeah. But it, but it black, it like blocked out the sky, oh, gee. right over us and went over the house, and and then everything was wet. That it was just like it rained, yeah, salt water, and we were just sitting there with our beer in our hands and going, "What the hell?" <laughs> yeah. And so that's just one thing I wanted to throw out there. Yeah, that's incredible. So it was just probably sitting in the water there and decided it was time to go. Boom. Well, yeah. There's banger bangers right around the corner. What is a banger? Uh, banger, uh, the military uh, air force, air, oh. uh, where they have all the submarines and stuff. So, oh, yeah, that's right. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah. 
walk this right <laughs> yeah. right down the waterway. Jeez. Well, that's a. So I don't know. That's an incredible experience as well. I mean, even though it was just instantaneous, it's still. Yeah. I mean, how do you explain salt water raining on your truck and something shooting and the over? house and everything? You yeah. just can't. You can't explain it. <laughs> so it's, it's out of this world. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. Okay. Just that... another weird thing going on in my head. <laughs> you know, I don't know. You know, in, in situations like that, you're you got to be really happy that you have other people there that witnessed it as well, because I think you'd just be going, was that real? Did that really happen? Oh, absolutely. On that, at, on that occasion, that's for sure. I mean, it happened so fast. If you didn't have anybody, they, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is incredible. So we've got ghosts, we've got UFOs, and I understand there's more, gentlemen. Yep, there is. Anyway, uh, I guess... Tim, do you want to say something about that for a minute, and then I'll, I'll chime in? Or, uh, well, the the story that the encounter he had with Bigfoot turned turned out to be a class A encounter, mm-hmm. and I didn't even know about it. I I we I went coming to Washington State to help out my uncle, and he was helping. Joe was helping me clean out his house and stuff, and. We were uh, staying at a hotel there, and we started talking, and I think Finding Bigfoot came on, and that was about 10 years ago now, maybe a little longer. And and I asked him straight out, what's the weirdest thing that ever happened to you and that, that you just can't explain or freaked you out or something like that? I can't remember exactly how I said it. And he told, tells me this story that he's going to tell you. But I'm going, wow, I've known you for all these years and I never knew that happened. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let him tell the story and then if if something's you know else occurs to me, I'll share it. But go ahead, Joe, you share what happened. Well, I bought uh bought this house that I'm living in now in ninety four mm-hmm. and uh I don't know, about a year it's a year or so later, I'm in this house and it's all trees right back behind me and I had a uh I had a trailer, and then it's just trees everywhere with all forest. Uh, up about a uh, quarter mile where the forest line started. And anyway, there's a light pole, not a light pole, but a power pole up on top of this hill. It goes up about 45 degrees. And I was over by my trailer, the back. I was working on lights or something like that on the trailer. And I could smell something, and I, it just was like rank dog you know dirty dog or something and it just was way overwhelming and then i just kind of looking around just and then i see this thing and uh it's like a huge human anyway long story short i i saw it and it started doing some yelling or something and it was super loud it pierced my ears and i was and i was running back to my house and i got my shotgun and closed my door but i got i at that time there was a I can see through my door, and by the time I got back, I have to grab my shotgun. I see it's still there. It was screaming, but it stopped and then turned and took two steps and was back into the woods. But it was absolutely huge, and I've, uh, you know, I was freaked out, completely freaked out. I'll never be the same. Yeah, and I didn't. I never used to want to talk about it at all. And then I talked to Tim, and Tim got me to talking, and still. But I, I've never talked about it too much. You know, I, it's sure. just, you, you're freaked out once you see something that big. Nice. Did you have any, uh, any idea how big it was? What are we talking about? Well, just by, I had, me and Tim has gone up there and stand, stood right where, where it was. Mm-hmm. And I went back down and we, we took pictures and looked at it. And I, it's, it's almost three times bigger than Tim. Wow. And Tim sticks from a width, from a width standpoint, from a height standpoint, it's a couple feet bigger. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It was huge. It's about eight feet tall because we figured we could see on the, there's some, a pole, that pole that he's talking about. And there's a, a metal clip on it that you can identify. And he, he's yet yeah, power pole with a, with, with another pole on it. But you can tell, I mean, from the picture, I just, you know. Once you see something that big, you're, you're going to run. 
<laughs> no doubt. And, and 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 I and I and I did, and I was scared. I, I I've never been so scared. I didn't know what to do about it. So, and to this day, I mean, I kind of want to see it again, but I don't. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I'm really torn about it. Yeah. The the power of their vocalizations is allegedly incredible. Um, you know, I've never heard them f- firsthand yelling, but. Uh, what what did it did you feel that as well? Yeah, it, it, that's what it, it that's what I did feel, and it went right through me, uh, and it made my ears ring. Yeah, and how when, far when away it, was it when it stopped? When it stopped, my ears were still ringing. How many yards do you suppose it was from where you were standing? Like, I, it's got to be a three quarters of a football field or something like that. Wow, these that's too close for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. That's absolutely terrifying. Just any other sign? No, I mean, do you, you you must be at least familiar with some things that are attributed to Bigfoot, like tree breaks or tree structures or, you know, things like that. Have you ever noticed anything like that in those woods? Uh, Well, up there, they cleaned it out now, and there's more houses being built and all that stuff. So, mm. But Tim came, and we went kind of looking for something, and we found some tree breaks and stuff like that up here. Footprints. Me and Tim together. Oh, you found footprints yeah. as well? It looked like it would be... We were looking at things, and since I kind of... We studied a little bit. We looked for strides, and we looked for length of the foot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would not say, if I was trying to use it as scientific evidence for Bigfoot, I wouldn't do it because it's it's circumstantial, but there was a lot of circumstantial evidence. Sure. And the more I think about it, the more I think it's probably something to it. There probably was something there, but the steps were big. We could see where they came in off the trail. We could, thing was broken at a deer crossing, so it mm-hmm. makes you wonder if they weren't marking a place where they get deer. I don't know. It's well, not- another thing. It, I didn't mean to interrupt him, but another sure. thing. We went up. We know. We went up to this place called. I call it the Tomato Fields, because. It was the tomato fields. I mean, this is where they, uh, a big, huge plateau where they dumped septic for years and years and years. So tomatoes grow in a certain time of year. Mm-hmm. And that's why I call it the tomato fields. And that's where I think those, when the tomatoes are ripe, that's, what, that's where those things go. Oh, okay. Okay. And it, that, that, that became the name of the book. So, oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's what it's called, all tomato fields. And that was Joe's idea, based on he thinks that thing was coming from that direction when he saw it and heading down to a creek. So, anyway. And there was another time, Joe, wasn't there, when you said you heard it and smelled it and it was running up the hill and breaking? Right, it was going, well, it was, it was just walking, but it, goes, it can go fast. And it was breaking branches and stuff. I was behind my house before they... uh um, before they cleared all the trees. But like I said, that tomato fields is up on the top of the plateau of right behind my house, about three miles away, four miles away. There's a plateau where they, you know, poured the septic for years and uh, for years and years. And, uh, you know, a certain time shit grows. I mean, those tomatoes grow big up there. Yeah. But they're, yeah. so that's why I call it t- t- tomato fields. Right. Yeah, that's that's bizarre. And and you know, finding those those breaks and those footsteps and stuff in an area in and of itself may not be as conclusive, but the fact that you you witnessed this thing being there and then were able oh, to yeah. corroborate other things on top of it, that certainly gives it a lot more a lot more gravity as being actual sign and stuff and, and did you ever uh, have things thrown at you, like little little objects? They're they're known for throwing pebbles well, or 
I, not 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 here on this property, but uh, I had some friends. Uh, we, we were down camping on the water, and uh, there was a, there were rocks thrown over over the tent. Wow! Into the water. Oh, that's incredible. Those were big ones too, weren't they? Yeah, they're big rocks, and they're coming from. You'd have to, yeah. They're they're too big for. They're big rocks, man. They go. <laughs> oh, they're getting help. Wow. They're huge. Yeah. Anyway, that's when you pack it up and go. Did you guys? Yeah. Uh, we didn't stay the night. No, we packed it up. <laughs> I don't blame you because I, I'm pretty sure. Well, well, uh, like two of them, I think, might have stayed. I left. Uh, uh, I, I'm not going to stay. <laughs> no. And I, I think that they're they're very, they're incredibly good, almost with like psychological precision at cranking up anxiety when they don't want you in an area. I don't. Oh, yeah, it can be, I believe that. Yeah, it can be tree breaks, can be whoops, can be knocks, tree knocks, uh, it can be any number of things. But they they excel at cranking up. It's like psychological warfare. I'm always so impressed when I hear the stories about people that don't leave and they stick around. And it's literally like the anxiety gets cranked up and up and up over successive nights, so that the people aren't even comfortable. They're they're on edge the whole time, and it makes it like you just don't want to be there. And yeah, I'm, well, I ever since I seen it, I I'm not a I don't go camping. I just didn't. I used to like to go camping and stuff like that. Now, once I saw it in ninety five five or six, I, I think uh, I'm I'm not a camper no more. <laughs> I don't. Think it just change. It changes you. You know, no, I'm not. I'm. I don't want to find it. You know. I, sometimes <laughs> uh, anyway, I didn't even want to talk about it. Until, yeah. you know, I talked, me and Tim started talking about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's powerful to talk about it, though, too, because I, I I think people have a right to know that these things might be out there because we have this concept of what the wilds are like. And then something like this being out there doesn't fit into that puzzle at all. It shatters yeah. everything. And Yeah, and, it's out there, too. Yeah, and, and they, could, they could they could be peaceful. They could be trying to avoid us, but they can also be dangerous. And, you know, you'd certainly want to know if you're going camping in a place where grizzlies might be. You know, I think right. you wouldn't want to make that choice without that knowledge. And so we certainly know where the bears are supposed to be and where they're not, where mountain lions, you know, are supposed to be and where they're not supposed to be. But these things aren't even acknowledged on an official level. So people are choosing to go camping in these in these spots and, and possibly putting themselves in what could be extreme danger? Yep, I agree. Yeah, that's why that's why I pack up and leave <laughs> before it gets dark. Yeah, you know. wow. Right. In chapter thirty of the book, the last chapter of the book, um, there's a really good uh, analysis of uh, how people deal with deal with this concept, either before they've seen it or after they've seen it, and. And uh, anyway, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's 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 a complete paradigm change for those that have that have had experiences and and I don't know, you know, Joe, if what you know what kind of an outdoorsman you were prior to that and how that affected you after. But I imagine it, you, as you've said, you don't camp anymore. So, well, yeah, I don't. I mean, I go shooting. I enjoy the woods and stuff. I, I I'll hike and stuff. But I got I got big guns, you know. Too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And so, but I don't, and I don't like. I don't want to camp. You know, I'm too old to camp now. I mean, I could still do it, but sure. I just haven't done it. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want a conflict. Right. No, I, I completely agree and completely appreciate your position on that. Um, I like enjoying the woods too, but I like also coming home after <laughs> enjoyed the woods. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I, I, my hats off to those people that get out there and like they'll backpack across an entire range and camp as they go, but that's not me for sure. Um, would, would you mind talking a little bit more about the book, Tim, and, and where people can find it? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's called Tomato Fields, and my name is Tim Moon, so uh, you'll find it right away if you if you, if you you punch that into the Amazon. Uh, and uh, it's it was really just inspired. When Joe told me that story, I'd been thinking already about maybe that impact you could have on people's thinking by using fiction to talk about 
things like Bigfoot and other things that might emotionally connect them to something they might not be rationally ready to accept yet Mm -hmm. and maybe make some connections for people on, on subjects like this. So I was already kind of thinking like that. And then his story kind of inspired me to, to, to write a story on it. It's completely fictional. Although I've heard a lot of Bigfoot stories, thousands of Bigfoot stories in my life. And the thing I find most interesting about the stories is that sometimes the ones where people do the craziest things, you know, they just don't do what you would rationally do under a situation. I remember one story I heard on, on a podcast where some Girl Scouts were hiking and they, they came really face to face close and most of the girls ran away, but one of them just ran around the Bigfoot in a circle. <laughs> and, and the Bigfoot was uh, not knowing what to do. Like, what's this crazy? And you just don't hear stuff like that. People, you would never do that in a rational way if you ran into an animal like that. So I just took everything I knew about, uh, the way people react, uh, uh, when they see these and the way these things react and the different things I've heard that they do. And then I just used my imagination and came up with stories and dialogue and, and, and this whole thing involves Joe's house. I mean, his, his house is central to the whole story. Mm-hmm. And I think I even say his address in there. Oh, and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, a whole thing's about animals that disappear and are killed and eventually, uh, requires them to try to hunt down this animal and kill it. And eventually they kill it, but in the process, they gain a lot of respect for it. And so it's just kind of an interesting type psychological horror thriller type thing. Okay. And it's getting pretty good reviews. I made a few mistakes, but it's not perfect. But it's it's getting some good reviews and... And I'm hoping to be able to do a sequel to it. So, anyway, but it's called Tomato Fields, and I'll send you the link if you want to put it on the show notes. Yeah, yeah, it's a good, it's a good read. Oh, that's cool. Very, very cool. And, and gentlemen, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come on the show today and share your experiences, share you know your journey. And uh, I hope the book does amazingly, ladies and gentlemen. Go check it out on Amazon, uh, The Tomato Fields by Tim Moon, and. Uh, Thank you guys again for coming on, man. This has been great. Thanks for having us, Brett. That was very nice of you to do that, and I hope it was worth worth your time. Oh, absolutely. I've had a, Thanks, I've had a blast. Oh, absolutely, gentlemen. And uh, thank you so much for uh, sharing this with their listeners. Okay. Well, you have a great day, okay? All right. You guys as well. Thank you. Get out. guys thank you so much for joining us here on tonight's show i hope you guys enjoyed it please feel free to follow us on facebook facebook.com slash paranormal portal radio as well as finding us on twitter we're on twitter at paranormal portal p-o-r-t-l and uh, we'd love to have you stop by our youtube page and subscribe and check out our shows there we got hundreds of shows journeys into the paranormal portal so i hope you'll check it out check it out guys we're over there at youtube.com slash paranormal portal so Hope to see you guys soon. Uh, we'll be back, of course, for more podcasts in the coming days. So we love you all. Be good, be kind, be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day and remember to laugh as much as you can. with some story about a Martian invasion. I found it necessary to restrain him. Restrain him, you stinking murderer! Now, now, Mr. Ryan, collect yourself. After all our planning, it wouldn't do to have everything spoiled, now would it? Lucha, start talking and talk fast, because when you get through, I'm going to take you apart piece by piece. What's this all about? But surely you know, Mr. Ryan, after all, you've been publicizing it for months. Listen, you... Please do not interrupt. You see, before colonizing your planet... 
We Martians sent advanced scouts to study your habits, your weaknesses. We found that the people on Earth are predominantly conditioned by advertising and publicity, and so we conceived the idea of treating our entire invasion as a vast publicity stunt. Clever, huh? After all, Mr. Ryan, who would suspect an invader who advertised his invasion in the newspaper, invited the public to his surprise attack, and spent millions publicizing his plans? Holy jumping catfish. You've done very well. Then there was no product. Ah, but there is a product. The product is death. <laughs> 